Not wanting to split the family up, Kari searches for a family willing to adopt all four brothers. The task is even more difficult because Matt, the oldest boy, suffers from cerebral palsy. Vilver Valenzuela was one of Kari's original students. When he arrived on her doorstep, he could neither read nor write. He excelled during the four years he spent at the school. But needing money to support his family, he returned once again to the dump and worked part-time at the school. Well, Bilber was, was with us for a while working, and then he dropped his job. And then by the beginning of the year, his mom came and asked me to help him look for look for him because he had been disappeared for three days. And we looked into the hospitals and the police and we, we didn't have any sign or any clue of where he was at. And um, then we, we got the news that he was found in the dump and cut into pieces. His head had been chopped off in his arm and, and they, they buried him. The loss of so many close friends in such a short period of time inevitably takes a heavy toll on Kari. It's it's very it's very devastating because you you you've seen a child you've been working with them and and you take them into your heart he becomes part of you and when you lose them like that it's just it's just uh, it's very hard to express the pain that you feel and. You want to ignore it because you just, you feel it a lot. And it's, and it's sometimes it's hard to, to, um, to face. Among the tragic stories that have unfolded over the years, there are many of hope. Oliver also learned to read and write at Mi Refugio. Today, he is just two years from achieving his goal of becoming an accountant. Oliver, what advice would you, as a success story, give to little children living in the dump for how their life could change? The parents have to realize what the kids are, are, are doing to make sure they're not getting into trouble, to watch out more for them, and to let them know that without God, we can't do anything. After more than a year of not having a school to go to, the day has finally come to start up again. The children line up before dawn at the original trade school. They are transformed from dump children to clean-cut school children once again. Still several are not allowed to make the trip for a few days because of lice. Kari introduces the man who helped make their first trip away from the dump possible. The children step aboard the bus, a step that signifies more than just a ride. It's a chance at a new life. The trip takes them away from the city and to an oasis of their very own. A place where the children see trees and smell fresh air for the very first time. Well, 
it's incredible. It's a joyful day. I mean, the transformation right from this morning when we saw those kids that were in the dump and, and with the animals and all the squalor dressed and clean and smiling and their parents smiling and getting onto the school bus and coming up here. Um, it's like taking them into a whole different world. I think it's a, it's a minor miracle. A good education is what will help the children break free of the dump's deadly grip. That education also comes in the form of vocational skills that allow the children to earn a steady income outside the dump. Kari has helped us a lot in our schooling, and she's also helped my parents, who work in the dump and don't make enough money. Kari has helped me since I was a little girl. Kari's assistance has not only been gratefully received, but it has also inspired some students to make career choices for their future. I would like to help people in need, the way Kari helps us all. Well, for us, she's heaven sent. She not only helps us, but she gives us the love we need. Artist Tite Baquero hopes that art may also play a part in making the school self-sufficient. Well, I was inspired by the work of Kari and others, and I thought that I could contribute with art since art is a vehicle that can be used to inspire, to challenge. And I thought that I could create a simple enough thing that the whole world could look at and realize that such an enormous work is being done here in Guatemala at Mirafuki. Several years have passed since Rafael was fitted for his prosthetic arm. Today he plays in the streets outside his home with the one thing that has always brought a smile to his face, his dog. I'm invited into Rafael's home by his parents. Rafael is anxious to show off his new kittens. Oh, wow. Hi, Bebito. I inquire as to what has become of his prosthetic arm. You can see that he's grown up, and, and he's 12 years old now, and, and he um, needed another arm. So we just started to pray, and I told him that, that you know, God could bring some more doctors down and help him out. He one day, a couple months later after that, he came into the school with, with this new arm that he has on. And I said, I said, well, where did you get that? You know, did you get it at, at the other institutions that are here working? He said, no, a man from one of the trash trucks just gave it to me. And he found it off one of the trucks. Kari left home to follow her heart. But in it, she carries along the encouragement from family and friends who continue to support and inspire her. Kari constantly reminds me that without the heart and hard work of the dedicated Guatemalan staff, none of this would be possible. I have a lot of people that are amazing, that God has, that God has touched and has brought them to, to help this ministry to grow and to become what it is today. It's his ministry, and I believe that he's, God is the one that touches the lives of the people. And he's touched my parents' life by allowing them to be so supportive of, of, my, of my being in this country, in Guatemala. Some who don't understand her mission often ask the question, why Guatemala when people are suffering in the United States? The answer, it seems, is that Kari's heart knows no borders. I think a lot of people ask me why I'm here in Guatemala, but I think, I think it just comes from your heart and you just need to follow that and know that, that God is there in each one of our hearts. We'll just look for him. And he's gonna lead us to love wherever we are and whatever we do. <laughs> 